Hey everybody, thank you for watching Lip Sense at Lunchtime. Today's color is, make sure I got it upright, Heartbreaker. And it's a shimmering rose pink with a touch of coral. I would say that's kind of how I would describe it. It's a beautiful color. I have it on right now. I actually have had it on for a little while and I just went and had wings and stuff. And it being the weekend, I had wings. And all I did was put some gloss back over it, but all things considered, it still looks pretty fabulous. Just saying. And the only thing I had on over it, I did actually put just a little bit of um, silver glitter gloss and then a glossy on top of that. But whenever I finished with my wings, and trust me, it was greasy and a mess, um, we went to Hooligans and I love their wings. And so I get the, the um, Wally wings that are... Uh, medium and like wet and they got all that juice and everything so trust me I had it all over and I was licking my fingers and everything because I get all up in that so this stuff is awesome I'm just saying nothing it is wing proof it just does not come off the best stuff I have ever found the only thing that's going to come off is the gloss so I just cannot say enough about this product I've been using it for over a year now. I started using it in, I would say May, I think it was around May, or maybe that's when I became a distributor of not this year, but last year. And I think I was a customer for just a little while before that. And then I finally decided in May, because whenever you sign up as a distributor, you can either just sign up for the discount or you can sign up to be a distributor that you're going to distribute like and you know sell to your friends and family and things like that anybody who finds it like very awesome like I do because it's so funny a friend of mine that's also on the group page we were talking about um I don't know one or two of my videos ago I think we were talking about how pretty much now lip sense is all we wear and it just it becomes so it's just it's so true because once you start wearing this stuff i'm telling you you get so used to having on something that isn't going to come off that you start to get annoyed or i don't know frustrated or let down if you're wearing something that you always have to worry about um because even like i'm like i'm saying i'm not in any way shape or form hold on a minute putting down any of these type of stuff because if i'm going to be trying out other makeup, which I do because a lot of times, like like I said, I have BoxyCharm and I have um, Ipsy and stuff like that. And a lot of times they will send different, um, the matte glosses and stuff like that in there. And I really like this ColourPop. Um, I think it's called Ultra Matte Lip and stuff like that. And I like them. Most of the time I'm going to put a little bit of a glossy something on over it, which you're supposed to totally be able to do. And in, in the world of lipstick and lip stuff that's not about lip scents, I would say that those things are pretty awesome if you didn't have the option to wear lip scents. They're pretty good as long as you don't eat anything that has grease. Um, I want to say the other day I was wearing one and it stayed on pretty well, except for I think I had like some KFC or something like that and I was wearing one of the other ones because like I said you know sometimes I try to branch out because I've been using lip scents for so long that I forget what it's like to be back in you know way back in time before I even started wearing it and I just get to the point where I get frustrated because once you've been wearing lip scents and I'm not saying this to pitch anything to any of you um, once you've been wearing lip scents, and I'm sure a lot of people who have purchased lip scents and use it, I'm guessing a lot of people start using it on a daily or several times a week basis because of its stay put power. Sorry, I'm doing something down here. I was messing with one of my rings. Um, but just, it stays. I don't like going out somewhere. And most of the time, like when I go out for the day, I'm not just going to like put on some lipstick go somewhere, come back and eat. A lot of times I'm out and about and I'm with my boyfriend and we're going to go out and we're going to spend the day driving around or doing something, um, go to some museums or who knows what, and then we're going to stop and we're going to eat somewhere. Well, I don't want to have the embarrassment of stopping to eat somewhere and then I'm like eating a burger and the next thing I know I've got like lipstick up here and down here because that's what used to happen to me. If I did not take a napkin and wipe the stuff off like that first, which nothing, if I didn't do that, take it off first, 
and God forbid, you know, hope that I had it with me, that I remembered to bring my lipstick, my liner, and my gloss with me, then I would have to either spend the rest of the day without any lip product on to where I'd be going like this all day, rubbing my lips and like licking my lips because I will constantly do that if I'm not wearing something. So, you know, long story short, no, it's pretty much short story long. It always is with me. But once you start wearing lip scents, you get so spoiled that it just stays on and that you don't have to worry about, oh, is that coming off or whatever. Even I would say the people who only get four hours worth of wear out of it, think about it. That's even way longer than you get with regular lipstick. And I'm saying I used everything from Maybelline and CoverGirl to Urban Decay, um, like I'm saying, uh, MAC, Kat Von D. I even has, have a ton of lipsticks still in here. Hold on a second. I'll show you. But give me a sec. And then, as you can tell, I, I have, like, other ones of these that, like I said, I wind up getting in Ipsy and stuff. Because I don't think that you understand what I'm saying when I tell you. And this is even um, toned down. This is just what I have right here next to me. And this was after getting rid of a bunch. There's, like, a whole ton of stuff in here. That's after getting rid of a bunch of them after I started using lip scents. And I only kept the ones that I really like because I want to swatch them and come up with different colors on my own in those um those little white cups that I was showing you in one of my videos where you can pre-mix lip sense colors um I really want to be able to let's see I have everything from matte colors to Maybelline I love their diamond shine I still have a ton of MAC some of them were the um luster glasses but I mean just all together right here and I know, I guess I did tend to gravitate a lot towards MAC, but like, I'm just saying, these are all MAC. So I wasn't like a stranger to buying high-end products. Um, and then there were some other random things, like, I'm trying to remember, I think I got stuff like that from um, Bath and Body Works, because they have some cool stuff too. But, and then I've got like, I'm trying to remember if this is a Jouer cosmetic something or other. I don't remember. Sweet Tooth, Lip Topper. So, I mean, it's not, I'm just kind of, and then here's like some other stuff, and it was um, Coquette Orchid that I really loved, and that was by CoverGirl. So, just trying to look all around. I mean, I've still got stuff in boxes. Um, I remember, I think this was Victoria's Secret, had this color, and I was obsessed with this color, and it's called Vixen. It was one of my favorite colors. And it was like, especially, I don't know, it was especially a pretty, hold on a minute, I'm not going to swatch this right if I'm not looking. And it's like a deeper, I don't even know how to say it, it probably isn't even showing up on there the way it really like looks in person, but it's like a red with copper reflex, and that's probably not even pulling off on there because I've got so many lights shining on it, but yeah, it is just like really pretty. And there's like no other way to swatch it to make it look, I mean on my hand it looks really pretty. But I'm just saying. So there's certain ones like that that I'm holding on to because I really just want to be able to create the same color with lip scents. Because every great once in a while I'll be like, oh my gosh, I have that whole drawer full of lipstick. I really need to start using those again. And as sure as shoot, whenever I do, I'll use them and I will go out for a day. I'll have it on, it'll look perfect. And you see how I'll go like this. Like, I probably do this like a hundred times a day. I always had to be like, and so careful that I didn't smear any of this off because I would have the lip liner and all that stuff too. And nine times out of 10, if I did this like too fast and I was just whatever, cause like down here I'd sweat and stuff too. I don't ever have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about this coming off. The most I would ever have to worry about is putting a little bit of gloss back on because this stuff is bomb. It does not go anywhere. And like I was saying, even, even for the people who even have some Sally lip glosses, um, Actually, I have several of the Sally Palladio lip glosses. I mean, I pick up stuff everywhere where I see stuff and I like it. Um, Walgreens stuff. I wonder if that one is still in here, but like seriously, I was a big into the MAC stuff. So whenever I tell you, oh yeah, I used to love MAC, this was some of my first glosses and it was in a collection that was like this really pretty, this one's called Light My Fire and it's darker, but... 
I mean, there's so many in here that I just don't even use anymore. These are some like old school Victoria's Secret ones that you can't even get anymore. Purpley colors and stuff like that. And I just really like the colors. Like seriously, when Victoria's Secret had their own own cosmetic line and it actually says Victoria's Secret on it and it'll have Victoria's Secret on this part all the way around it. I don't know if you can actually see that. And these are old, but yeah, I mean, they had like such pretty and it won't swatch, right? I already know, but such pretty stuff. And it was like very, like that's a brownish, but it had brownish and like some sort of pinkish whatever going on in it. And again, my lights are like so bright. But I mean, the, the swatches on there, on when I look at them, it's like, ooh, yeah, I can see that. But whenever I'm showing it to you, I really don't know if it's coming off the way it really is. And it's beautiful. But I had three colors by Victoria's Secret. This one was, I think, the one that I wore the most. And it's like a mauve color. And it was called, this one's Glamour Girl. This was one of my favorites. And then the one that I swatched on my hand, right down there, yeah, down there is called Tame. And it's like a brownie. I don't even know what to call it. It's like a brown with other almost like copper reflex. I'm a big copper person. Even on my eyes, I like golds and coppers and stuff a lot too. So, and this was Milani. It's just a, like a gloss. So, and then back in the day, I don't even know who this is, but it's called Princess. And it was like this old gloss. I just have like 500 glosses in here. I wish I could find that one, because I was saying that one of our lip colors reminds me of it. This might be it. Yes, this was the very first MAC lip gloss that I had, and it's the lip glass, and it's called Purr. And it reminds me of, I think it was Bravo or something, or something. It was one of those that you wear with like a really light lip. And again, I'm sure the swatch is not going to come out like hardly anything, but it's just like super... That's probably better to where you can see it. I just had to get it up really close, but it's just like so super sheer that it reminds me of, I'm trying to think if it was the, um, the opal or something like that, but like that was the color to have back in the day. Now maybe you can see those colors. I don't know, but they're so highly reflective that you probably can't really see a lot. So anyways, walk down memory lane here, but there's just so much in here. It's crazy. And then, like I said, Revlon was one of my, um, this is, this is L'Oreal Sandstone. Um, I pretty much dabbled in a little bit of everything, but yeah, that's just a tiny bit of what some of my collection is. Uh, it used to be way more than that before I was wearing lip scents. There's like a ton that I don't have in there anymore. Holy cow. Yeah. I gave a lot away. Um, but yeah, so like I was saying and taking the long way around the mulberry bush, um, I'm probably going to wipe that off while I'm talking to you cause I don't want to wind up getting it all over me. But yeah, those are some really pretty colors and I wanted to be able to swatch them and then make, create colors in those little, these little white cups that I was telling you, you can like put lip scents in to where that's why I kept a bunch of those because I want to be able to try to recreate some of that. It sounds fun, actually. Okay, so I'm just wiping that stuff off, which is one of the reasons why I don't like it, is because you can just that easily wipe it off and then it's pretty much gone. You sip something, it's gone. You eat something and then you have to do, it's either gone or you have to go like that or like you see people doing on videos and it's really funny, but it's not because anybody who wears regular lipstick knows that's pretty much how you really have to eat. So yeah. Even the people who only get, and I say only, get four hours worth of wear is still huge compared to what people used to get, or still do get, if you're only wearing regular lipstick. I'm just saying. I mean, everything you have to take in, I'm just putting some of this back over here, um, you have to really take into consideration what you're talking about. So I understand that some people are like, you know, I only get like four hours wear out of it and then I, ha and then it's gone. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's different and you will get anywhere from four to 18 hours. And some of my friends that use it just basically do keep the tube with them. 
I'm trying to figure out what I did with my heartbreaker. They'll just keep their tube with them in their purse or in their pocket. A lot of times I keep my stuff in my pocket just because it's easier for me to take out in a pinch, hurriedly put it on. But you would just keep this with you, and as the day's going on, you would go into the bathroom, blot your lips, and then try to make sure that this is clean, like you can take some water or whatever, and just uh, wipe it off because it's not going to go anywhere. And you might have, depending on how much of it has broken down, just try to make sure you get it as clean as possible, blot it off, you know, and then just basically, like if it's only missing in here, then just kind of do your three coats in there again, and then you'll have it back again. Um, that's what I do sometimes if I have on the, like the super dark colors that you that would be more noticeable if some of it wore off um because you know sometimes it even happens to me where I'll get like five hours worth of wear and then you notice a little bit more breaking down inside or something like that I mean I still don't hate on it considering the fact that if you're wearing regular lipstick you might get in half an hour of wear before you start seeing it everywhere like on your cup and everywhere else that you're drinking of course I have my baby next to me I have four of these, by the way. They're all a little bit different. This one's the leave a little sparkle wherever you go, because I truly believe in that. That, and I get thirsty a lot. And I truly believe in being the light. So leave a little sparkle wherever you go kind of like falls into my thing, because I really like that. Um, so, yeah. No matter where you're at and what you use, this stuff lasts the longest that I have ever I've ever tried. And I'm not just saying that because I sell it. I'm saying it because whether you ever buy it from me or not, I'm saying it because it's true. And you know, for me it, it lasts anywhere from it just depends. Like I can be wearing it at six thirty in the morning and it will still be on the very next morning. Um, it might not be perfect, but it'll still be on to where I could slap some gloss on and leave the house and come back. But that also usually goes for my makeup, too. I don't know how I've gotten lucky to where it'll just stay on, too, but just saying. Lip, uh, lip gloss is just, it's uh, lip gloss. <laughs> lip sense is the real deal. It stays on. I mean, I'm not making any of this up. You can Google 5 million different YouTube videos or whatever, and it's it just is. It's an awesome product, and... Like I said, I'm here because I'm happy to share it with other people, especially people who might want to wear a beautiful color for a special occasion. Maybe the first time you ever bought it or will buy it will be because you have a wedding to go to or a wedding that you're in. Maybe it's because one of your friends is about to get married and you want to buy her the gift of lip scents because you know she can put it on before her wedding and way on into the night whenever she sails off into the sunset and is headed for her um honeymoon she'll still have the same color on it will have lasted through hugging and kissing and whatever her new groom or you know 50 million other people that you give them a kiss on the cheek and you don't have to worry about getting you know rings on whatever it's just a wonderful product end of story and if you ever want to if you're ever brave enough to try it and you're like you know what okay I'm interested I just don't know about investing that kind of money in something that I can't try on like I said, all you have to do is let me know, and I will either meet with you, depending on where you live, or I can mail you samples for free. So, what do you have to lose? That's all I'm saying. I'm coming on here showing you guys all these colors as as a added sharing factor to show you what the colors look like in real life, you know, because you can Google the colors online. If you see me wearing one and you're and you're you're interested, but you still want to see it on some other people, feel free to Google because Google was my best friend whenever I was first, you know, a customer and trying to figure out what colors I might want to buy in the future. I had one that I decided to start off with, and even like if you find one and that's your first one, then even if you only like you put aside, I'm going to put aside ten dollars per paycheck, and then you you know every a lot of people get paid every other week. So if you do that, then you can buy a new one just about every month if you wanted to, because they're 25 bucks. And you know, so that's give or take $5. A lot of people spend $5 on their coffee every day. 
that's like $25 in a week or more if they get it on Saturday and Sunday too. So I'm just saying, what one person thinks is expensive is another person's like, I mean, if you rationalize the fact that, oh, this tube of thing is expensive. Well, no, it's not. It will last twice as long as a normal thing, a normal, whatever you want to say. I want to say a tube of lipstick because you're only having to apply this usually once a day and it's on, it's one and done. Whenever you have other lipsticks that might only cost six, seven, or eight bucks, maybe ten, you're okay, but you're going to have to keep reapplying every time you eat and drink something. And so in reality, you're getting more out of this product than you are up with the other ones that you're buying. So, um, and again, with the whole thing of, oh, it's 25 bucks, that's a lot for lipstick. No, it's not. If you've ever bought high-end makeup, like if you bought Urban Decay or you've bought MAC or any of that stuff, that stuff comes off and you still pay more than you would in a drugstore. So there's that. And you get what you pay for. That's another thing. And also, again, a lot of people out there buy their coffee or buy their lunches every day. You probably spend $10 on lunch alone without blinking an eyelash. Batting an eyelash? Batting an eye? Whatever it is. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that is like too much. For me, the peace of mind knowing that this is going to go on and stay on all day is definitely worth 25 bucks. And then you don't, it's not like you have to buy 20 of them all at once. I mean, seriously, you can buy one one month, buy another one another month, because with these you can always mix the colors together, or you can wear them three layers of the one color, or you can do one layer of one, one layer of another one, and then the same layer, you know, so you can like buy three of them and put one layer of each one. It's one of the only lip colors slash lipsticks, whatever you want to call it, that you can layer or that you can put in one of those little rings and, you know, mix them all together and come up with your own color. I'm just saying, it's one of the coolest things that I've ever found. And that's why I choose to share it with you. So whether you ever buy anything from me or, or not, I'm here to share stuff with you. That's my purpose. That's why I'm here, because it's just to share. You notice if, I mean, I know a lot of people are probably afraid to even hit like on a video or like on a picture because they're like, oh, well, if I hit like, maybe they're going to jump on me and try to sell me stuff. Just letting you know, I'm not going to do that. If you want something, you can message me. I'm not going to be all hitting people up. The most I might do is if somebody has bought something from me, I might send them a message after a while and say, hey, I'm ordering more glossy glosses. Do you need one? And that's as complicated as it gets because if I'm putting in a bulk order and I just want to know, because that's probably the thing, your gloss is going to be the thing that you're going to use the most. So it's the one thing that you're probably likely to run out of quicker. So, I mean, and that's just being there for my customers, being there and being consistent and thinking of someone before I go to put in my order. Because a lot of times I order certain things or certain sets based on what I'm going through, um, how much I'm going through at a time, and stuff like that. So just saying, you don't have to be afraid to hit like or to ask a question. If you ask a question, I'm not going to be like, oh, you like that color. So are you going to buy it? Are you going to buy it? You're going to buy it now? Do you want to buy it later? I'm going to write you down because I know you want to buy it. And I want to make sure you're going to buy it. But, you know, so I'm not like that. I really, I love the colors. I think if anybody out there tried them, um, several of my friends and family have tried them and they love them. A lot of people wear them every day. A lot of people are the ones that mix and match the colors and then mix and match the glosses. It's a fun thing and it's something that's so secure it's a matter of security knowing that you're going to be just look just as good five hours later as you did when you walked out the door in the morning. That's what I love about it. It's a matter of security for me. Knowing that at the very least, it's going to mattify down and maybe look like this. And that's okay with me, even though I don't like the matte. But as soon as I decide that I want to put a little moisture on it, then I can just go and and then it makes it even that much more awesome because now it's shiny and pretty for me. But it still looked awesome even wasn't when it wasn't all glossed up. That's the hardest thing that you have to worry about during the day when you're wearing lip scents is 
Is my gloss coming? Did my gloss come all the way off? Your lips don't get all dry and cracked and hard feeling. Anyways, this video is already about 25 minutes long and I haven't even done the application yet. So anyways, you can tell I'm very passionate about this product. That's all I'm going to say. If you have any questions, don't be afraid of me pouncing on you and trying to sell you something just because you have a question. I'm not like that. I will try to be very accommodating, but if you're like, you know what, I'm interested in that, but I really, I, I don't know if I'm there yet. It's perfectly fine. You can come to me whenever you're ready. That's the way I am. That's the way I was. I was asking a lot of questions to the person who was my sponsor and I was Googling a lot and yeah, I mean, it took me a little while before I really jumped in. And then once I jumped in and I tried a little bit, I like full scale went bungee dumping, <laughs> bungee diving into the, the biggest like ocean of lip scents because I was hooked. Seriously. Um, it is really hard to find a bad color. And if you do, if you buy more than one color, like especially if you were to buy, say like one of the deepest, not black and not blue colors we have, probably is, I'm just kind of looking over here. Um, there is one color and for some reason it's like really escaping my mind. It's one of our super fall colors and it's, to me it's like the most vampy one. And I can't, mold wine, mold wine. That one is like a super vampy, like kick butt color. And say if you bought that one and you were like, oh, everybody else on Google, whenever I Googled it, the pictures came up and they looked so awesome in it. But I just don't think I can pull that off. It's just not, just not my color. Then you can always either A, ask me if you can swap it for another color, which I will gladly do, you know, or B, you can say, I would like my money back because I'm just really, it's not my thing, um, blah, blah, blah. You get a complete money back guarantee. And also you can buy another color to mix with that color. Say you like that color, but you would like it to be just a little bit lighter. You can always buy like Bravo or Bombshell and put a layer of mold wine and then a layer of something lighter and then another layer of mold wine or do two mold wine and two Bravo or Bombshell or do just one mold wine and then do the light and the light. It'll come out a little bit different every time. So you're kind of getting several looks out of two lip sense colors if you do that. And it's fun to mix layers and stuff. Or you can put it in that little white cup and like, you know, swirl it around or whatever if you want to get creative. I am so excited about, I want to do some videos of that after I find it, finish my lip sense at lunchtime. So I'm like getting all excited. Okay, so yeah, I better go take this off and I'm going to just, re I'm going to apply really quickly because this is almost like a half an hour video and I haven't even started yet. So hold on just a minute. I'm going to go take this off. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I went in and cleaned my lips, made sure that they are, I used, oh, by the way, I don't really mention this in every single one of my videos. I probably should. Whenever I take my lip scents off, you can totally use the Oops Remover, which it'll come in your kit if you get the brand new uh, to Lip Sense kit. It comes with a Lip Sense color, um, a gloss of your choice. A lot of people start with Glossy Gloss. And then the Oops Remover. Um, you can use the Oops Remover to take off your lip color, but I tend to probably only use oops remover if I really make an oops. Like if I am putting something on and I get it too far over here or something like that, that's usually when I use the oops remover. Senegens also makes something called foops remover. That's with an F-O-O-P-S. And that is actually for getting off their waterproof whatever makeup, which would include the uh, lip scents. And you can use that as well. When you use those, I believe you have to put it on and just kind of like let it sit and soak in for a few minutes. It's not something that you can just take on a cotton pad or whatever and just, you know, swipe, swipe, and it's gone. You need to let it just sit in for a little bit. But I find the Neutrogena Beauty Facial Beauty Bar to be um, the most effective and quick for me. I just use my regular, uh, the washcloth I use to wash my face, and I just use that, and I just take, like, whatever. Um, I just take it and just like take two couple of fingers and like rub on the beauty bar and then I'll take it and just go like this 
at the end of the night, if you're taking it off then, it really doesn't matter because you're probably going to take all of your makeup off. But I tend to just use those two fingers and rub it around in the the um, soap bar. It's a clear glycerin bar. Well, it's clear in a sense. It's kind of like a orange clear-ish bar. And you rub it around like a little bit and then I just take like my two fingers under in the washcloth or under the washcloth and go like that and so that I hold the rest of the washcloth away so that just like just now I didn't want to get all of this taken off because I'm we're going for a walk on the beach after I get done so anyways so you just want to make sure your lips are clean and dry and if you by the way you can find these at anywhere just go into like the face products and um it's I don't know maybe two or three bucks you can get them Walmart, CVS, Walgreens, anywhere. And one block like that will last you for a long, a long time. And I do wear mine every day, so. Okay, so doing the usual shtick, make sure the lips are clean and dry and exfoliated if need be. That one's a little bit rough, but I'm just going to wing it because this video is already getting really long. Super chatty today. Okay, so you just want to shake it up pretty good. Make sure you get it all mixed up. You want to hear the little ball in there kind of rattling around. Do a little bit like that, a little bit like that. And then it's just a matter of the better you get it mixed up, the better even application you'll get. So, all right. So I'm just going to take, this is Heartbreaker. I just want to wipe off any of the excess. Because the thinner coats you do, the quicker it'll dry. The thicker you get, you gotta wait a little bit for it to dry. So here's the first coat. And if you're able to, like if you still have enough on your wand, you can always just keep going. It's my tendency to always keep re-dipping, so you'll see me doing that all the time. Because I just want to make sure I have a fresh wand. Full of product and then you just give it a few seconds this one is actually already not tacky so I'm saying I was doing one the other day I think it was hazelnut and it was taking it a long time to dry and that's not typical I don't know if I was just applying it super heavy or what because that one's just when you do it so luscious looking this is my second coat by the way for the bottom and now I'm doing the top and just wiping excess product off. And you always want to get inside on the waterline. You don't have to do it like a ton, just enough to where it'll protect it from your saliva breaking it down. And then I like to take, I'm just wiping more off again, before I do the third coat. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I do it down, but not too much so that you can see it. And I am lining. It might not be even the first time, so it's okay. And when you line, you actually want to leave a little bit on there. Because that's one occasion where you don't mind it, mind it being a little heavy. Is when you're trying to line. Because typically you want the liner to be a little bit darker, but not like super darker. And you don't have to line your lips at all. I just really do like to line mine. So I think that did pretty good. I mean, if I was going to get really picky, I like to make my Cupid's bow a little bit more stand uh, And I like to overline. Sorry, I'm wiping it off is what I'm looking down about. Um, like I would do here. And I like to define the cupids though a lot. And that is no matter what color I'm using, I like to define the cupids bow. A lot of times when I'm doing my highlight, whenever I am doing my makeup, I'll do it on my cheeks, like right there and there. You can probably see it a little bit. I didn't do it uber, but um, with the light, it probably, you would think it would like super reflect, but it's probably not. Um, you can see it probably down my nose. 
and a lot of people will put it right here on their cupid's bow i usually don't because whenever i do my lip scents i line a little bit above and beyond so i'll highlight that area but not my cupid's bow which i really do love to highlight this is my third coat by the way i got hip hip hiccups i've got hiccups hiccups for some reason so that's why i keep going like that And then just make sure whenever you go to put your last coat that you get far out over where you just lined it and it'll all just kind of mesh together seamlessly. And ta-da! That's pretty much it. We just want to let it sit and, well, I didn't do, hold on, I shouldn't say that's it. That's completely not it. That's almost it. I'm just wiping off again. I know I'm probably doing that all the time. And I'm looking down, and you guys are probably like, what are you doing? Okay. Uh, and then I need to do my bottom. That's why I was saying I wasn't done yet. And I didn't even really notice it. But I mean, it didn't look so terrible that you were like, oh, no, don't stop, don't go, you know, don't finish. It's just... For me, I like for it to be nice and even, like I said, so I tend to be a bit, little bit OCD, and that's better. Yeah. Okay. And if you ever get any on your teeth, just go ee -ee -ee -ee, like that real quick, and it'll come right off. If you ever get any too far out or whatever in the corners, just use your oops remover. If you don't have oops remover, I would recommend you getting it. If you don't wear makeup on your face, you probably could use just the Neutrogena Beauty... That's a lot. Neutrogena Facial Beauty Bar. You could just use that, probably even like on a Q-tip or something to where you don't get it all over. Just know that if you use a, a lip sense remover, make sure you wash that area before you try to reapply any lip sense if you're going to. Because whatever you use to remove it, if it's still on your face, it won't let it apply over it, if that makes sense. So yeah, that is almost already dry. Oh, no wonder I couldn't find, I had this, the glossy gloss in my pocket from earlier. And I was trying to, I was, I was using an old one that has like only a little bit left in it. Cause I tend to, I like to use stuff up. I don't like to waste things. So, um, I've got my glossy. Or, let me see. This is kind of, yeah, this is kind of a shimmer color. Or is it? I don't know. Maybe it's not. I'm trying to look at it. In the tube it is kind of shimmery I think I was gonna put matte on with it I've got ten different glosses up here literally like I'm not even kidding I've got all of these up here and I'm trying to figure out which one is the matte gloss because I was gonna try it real quick just just to see what it looks like with the shimmer because I know I'm always saying well you don't want to wear matte with a shimmer but since they're here I will use the matte gloss real quick and just apply it and see what happens. Might not really be much of anything, but if this is a shimmer, it's not, it's not super shimmery. That's all I, all I got to say about that. And this really does feel comfortable on the lips. I'm not gonna lie. Any of you that knows me know this, that bleh, my, I'm getting so tongue-tied tonight that matte is not my favorite gloss, but like I said, it's growing on me. So this is Heartbreaker with matte gloss, and I still think that looks pretty. This must not be, if it is it has any shimmer to it, then it's not a lot because this really does look pretty decent. Um, I don't know what you think. To me, it almost looks like it does have some shimmer to it, but if it does, you it really does not like shine obnoxiously through with this matte like you could mattify it down and it just looks like a nice maybe a velvet matte so i like heartbreaker this truly is like a medium something or other like somewhere between a brown and a pink that you could wear and yes i am going to say it again you could wear as an everyday color or probably would go with just about anything um especially if you usually do like neutralize like i do so yeah, I really like that. So, going to... And again, nothing but gloss. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead. I, I always show you everything with glossy gloss. So I will do that one at the end. And I'll go ahead and do opal real quick. There's the opal. And just to see because it usually makes everything look really pretty and cool. Has a really pretty opaly sheen to it. That is really pretty. I like that a lot. Maybe I should have done this one last because I really like to leave that one on. Yeah, so this is Heartbreaker with Opal. I'm really liking this color. Sometimes I reach for the same color family, color group so often that I forget about a lot of the colors that I've got in there if I don't wear them all the time. Okay. Um, what else? If I do the glitter, the glitter is going to kind of stay on, but I'll do the silver glitter gloss so you can see. And just mix her up a little bit, like always. And if you ever get a gloss that has glitters and stuff in it, and it looks like it's separated, just kind of squish it all around. Do exactly what you would not want to do with mascara, because you don't want to get air into your mascara, because that will dry it out. So I try to use whatever's here on the wand first, and sometimes, sometimes there's a lot. Oh no, it's not really letting you see it, but sometimes there's a lot. This time there was just a little, especially if you're going like this, a lot of times it'll get all goopy up there. And I don't like for it to get goopy and I don't like to waste, so. Yeah, that's pretty. I'll wipe a little bit of it off there. And that may be even just enough sparkle for you. If you want more, just keep on slathering it on. And that is Heartbreaker with Silver Glitter Gloss. Okay. And then... I'll just do it with glossy gloss. I'm trying to figure out where I wiped that last part. Really, the only ones I have to worry about where I wipe them is the glitters. And again, nothing on the napkin but gloss. So I think that was my almost empty one. I'm just going to take the glossy gloss and apply that now. And again, you don't have to apply a heap and helpful of that either. If you're not like loving the gloss, you can just do enough to make sure you get it evenly. If it's your first gloss of the day, whatever gloss you're wearing, make sure you do a nice even coat of it to where you get inside on your corners, get inside on your waterline, and get all the way outside because that will help to moisturize and protect your lip color underneath. So that is Heartbreaker with Glossy. Okay, folks, that is pretty much it for today. The video is like 42 minutes and something already now because I got a little bit chatty. Um, just be aware that if I wind up doing a get ready with me with my whole entire face of makeup, I'm not going to be doing like a fake video where like a lot of the YouTubers will jump on and their videos are 20 minutes, but they did a full face of makeup and a lot of them wear a lot more makeup than I do. And a lot of times from start to finish, if I start with, if I was to start filming the everything, like from nothing on my skin whatsoever, and then I'm putting on my lotion, whatever lotions I'm putting on, um, face primer, foundation, um, contour, blush, highlight, if I don't skip all of that, it's going to be... Like, again, from start to finish, from that all the way to the very end, applying my lip scents, it will probably be an hour-long video. So I'm just letting you know that. But I honestly don't think it's fair sometimes that the YouTubers will make it... I don't know. I'm not going to say, like, it's almost being dishonest. And I can't say, like, YouTubers, because actually I'm on YouTube. I, I have these videos on YouTube. And then I'm also going to wind up doing a makeup channel that has, like, all sorts of makeup, not just... Senegence Cosmetics, but my point is I think it's more genuine when people don't edit their videos because like the other day I was watching one of Jaclyn Hill's videos and she was responding or 
what do you want to say? She was reacting to her very first video ever. And in that video, she, I don't think she knew how to edit or she didn't do any editing back then. I think she had an intro, but whatever she started with, she started and she finished. And I, it looked like she didn't do any editing. I can't remember. But one of the things she said in it was, Oh my gosh, do you see there? I got like mascara on my face or something like fallout or whatever it was from some something. It was something. She got something on her face and she was like, oh my gosh, do you see that? Like I just went ahead and fixed it on camera. If that was today, I would just edit that out. And I'm thinking, okay, you're showing people how to apply makeup and these people are thinking like, how are these people so perfect at putting on makeup? Because it seems easy, but also complicated. But it's like, some of you guys never screw up. You never make mistakes. You never poke yourself in the eye with your mascara and wind up being all like that and having it like down here. Um, your wings always look perfect. Um, you never seem to have fallout, all that stuff. And it's like, you know, I'm almost, I'm 99.9% .9 sure. I don't know. Any of you that's actually watched this video all the way to the end, Tell me what you prefer. Would you rather have a makeup video that doesn't show you how hard it really might be to do something? Because some of them skip putting on fake eyelashes. Some of them skip doing most of their makeup and just start on the eyes. Some of them will edit out if they accidentally get stuff down here. Some of them will edit out if they do a wing and it gets all over the place and they didn't do it perfect. Um, would you rather know how hard or how complicated something really is and how long it takes um or would you rather watch something that's edited and sped up that makes you feel like you should be able to do this whole face of beauty in 20 minutes or would you rather have a get ready with me that is like real and genuine and it might be an hour long but you already aware of that because i probably would have told you at the very beginning of the the video you know get your drink and get comfortable because we're going to do this together and it's not going to be edited out. It's going to be step by step. And if I accidentally poke myself with my mascara, um, you're probably going to be, you know, sitting here watching me having to clean it up. But at least then you might know, oh, this is what I do. If I do that, if that happens, she already told me this is how she cleaned it up. Or because like mascara can be a biatch to me because I have long eyelashes and I'm not complaining whatsoever. We all have our struggles. But when you have long eyelashes, you have to be careful when you're putting the stuff on that it doesn't hit up here. And so, I mean, there's all different things that different ones of us go through that we have to watch out for. Or like certain pigments or if you're using glitters. Um, the best thing you can do is try to use a glitter glue um, for glitter pigments or whatever up on your eyes. But you still might get some fallout here. And if it's like massive... Then you might be like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I have a full face of makeup on and then I've got all this junk down here. How do I fix it? A lot of them, from what I've watched, they just edit that crap out and make you think that nothing ever happened. That they're perfect and they don't make mistakes and the life is full of unicorns and kittens and people don't, or at least they don't, make mistakes doing any of their makeup. I would almost rather watch somebody who's more genuine that makes mistakes and lets me know that, oh, you know what, this is hard for me, but you know what, I don't feel that bad because it's hard for her too. Or the, at least I know she's being real and she's not covering up if she's just poked herself in the eye and is sitting there for like five seconds going like this and has to clean it up. Or, you know, maybe that person has the same problems that I do and instead of editing it out and making it seem like, oh, you know, it all just happened magically, I get to see that it's not just me struggling with this thing. So let me know how you feel about that in the comments because I'm about, seriously, really about to start my YouTube channel that's not just lip sense. You can find Perfect Pouts by Elisa on YouTube and that's these kind of videos. Like if you were to go on there, you would see this one because once I post them on my Facebook page, I usually post them on YouTube and I'm really, really, really wanting to know your honest opinion on whether or not you prefer to watch edited videos to save time or whether you would be more inclined to watch one that shows you the real basics step by step, the struggles, the, the easy parts, the things that are, you know, no nonsense and don't take forever, the stuff that's a little bit harder and 
the struggle, you know, the struggle's real, certain things. Would you rather have something that's condensed down and sped up to save time? Or would you rather have something that's real and that speaks to you and that if I make a mistake, I'm not erasing it so that you can think that I'm perfect and I can do my makeup in 20 minutes and you should be able to too? Or would you rather see the reality of it, how long it really takes, and follow it step by step? I'd really like to know because I'm seriously considering not editing my videos whenever I post them on my new YouTube makeup channel. Because I think that's one of the things that's lacking right now is that people edit the crap out of their videos to condense them down to like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And I don't even do as much makeup as a lot of these makeup gurus do on YouTube. If you think that it takes them less time to do their makeup when they're using 50 different eyeshadows and blending and blending than it does for me to do mine from start to finish, then yeah, no. It probably takes them two hours to do their makeup and they're bloop down into 20 minutes because they're speeding it up and chopping things and cutting it out. So let me know your honest opinion. This thing's going on like 50 minutes, almost 51, so I'm going to go, but let me know your thoughts. I appreciate it, and see you next time at Lip Sense at Lunchtime. Bye.